Well, hi there, boys and girls. I'd like to give a shout out to my NHS officers. I think I didn't say that. That's okay. We're keeping it there. NHS officers. We have induction tonight, and they've done a lot of work for this. And also for everyone who helped me today, folding programs and taking stuff to the auditorium, greatly appreciate your help because there are a lot of my kids that, that did that today. And I'm really lucky as a teacher as thinking that I have some of the best kids in the school. And so I do appreciate your help for that today. So we're going to get this video busted out so I can get ready for induction. And this is Natural Law Derivatives. We're starting Chapter 5, and we're going to take derivatives of things that do not act like polynomials. And I'm going to ask you to remember three rules from pre-cal. And that is, if you have the natural log of a to the b, this can be rewritten as b times the natural log of a. The exponent can just come down, almost like we're taking a derivative, but it's just a property of logarithms. Also, I'm going to take advantage of the natural log of a times b property, which says this is the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. And then the last one is the natural log of a quotient. By the way, this works for all logarithms, not just natural logs. But in calculus, we almost solely work with natural logs. And that's the natural log of a divided by b can be separated as the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. Believe me, this is going to be really helpful. OK, so you only need to know two rules for derivatives. So here we go. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. And that's saying something. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Natural log of x, let me show you what that looks like. So I'm come down here and get a little ray. OK, so there's the x and y axis. Come back here. Natural log of x crosses the x axis at 1, 0. It's got the y axis as a vertical asymptote. It's increasing the entire time, and it's also concave down the entire time. What this statement says is that the slope at any point is the reciprocal of the x-coordinate. So for example, out here at 4, the slope at 1 fourth, I'm sorry, the slope at 4 is equal to 1 fourth. So the slope is 1 divided by that x-coordinate, anywhere on the natural log curve. All right, the only other thing you need to know will be what if it's the natural log of u, where u is some function of x. And this derivative is going to be u prime divided by u. It's going to be rather easy. I'll show you several examples. So those are the, this is everything we're going to be doing today. This is pre-cal stuff at the top, and this is new stuff down here. This is calculus-y stuff. Off we go to an example. All right, so I've got y equals the natural log of x squared minus x. Here I've got a form of the natural log of u, where u is some function of x. And I'm going to take the derivative of this. My answer is going to be u prime over u. So if I let u equal x squared minus x, you probably see now why we spent so much time on u substitution. We're going to continue to use this for probably the rest of the year. If u equals x squared minus x, then u prime, or du dx, is 2 x minus 1. And so the answer to this derivative is u prime over u. So this will be 2x minus 1 over x squared minus x. So let's see here. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. OK. It is a, and that's because the denominator has been factored. They factor out an x. So that answer is a. All right, next example. This is one that I'm going to use the properties of logarithms before I take the derivative. And I'm going to use the property of logarithms that says the log of a to the b power can be rewritten as b times the natural log of a. I'm going to use this property first before I go ahead and take my derivative. I'm curious why I did a straight line l on this side but a cursive L on the right-hand side. I'm sure that's some flaw in my personality, but whatever. Okay, so before I take a derivative, I'm going to rewrite this as 6 times the natural log of 5 minus x, because that is a property of logarithms. Now when I take the derivative, the 6 can just sit there, and I can take the derivative of the natural log of 5 minus x. So my u will be 5 minus x, my u prime, or du dx, is negative 1. So you need to remember the derivative of natural log of u is u prime over u. And then I've got the 6 in front of all of this. So it's 6 times all of that. 
So you just put the 6 in the top, negative 6 over 5 minus x, and then we freak out because that answer is not up there. And so did I do something wrong? No, I did not do something wrong. This answer is B because you can factor a negative 1 out of the denominator, and if you factor out a negative 1, it turns that around into x minus 5. It's the tricky stuff you've got to know with multiple choice questions. So that will cancel these negatives, and that's why it is B. Okay, the next example is I've got the natural log of the square root of x squared plus 4. I'm going to rewrite this as the natural log of x squared plus 4 to the 1 half power. And then I'm going to, again, invoke that natural log rule. I'm going to bring the 1 half down in front before I take my derivative. So I've got y equals 1 half natural log of x squared plus 4. And now I'm going to take the derivative. And again, the 1 half can just sit there and wait on me to do my derivative. So here the u would be x squared plus 4. The u prime would be 2x. The derivative of natural log of u is u prime over u. So this answer will be u prime over u. And I think they're probably going to cancel these halves. This 1 half and this 2 would cancel. And so it's just x over x squared plus 4. Okay, one last example, and this is going to look pretty crazy, uh, but we're going to separate it and it won't be too crazy if I use my log properties. Now here I'm going to use the property that the log of a times b is the log of a plus the log of b, and I'm also going to use the property that the log of a divided by b is the log of a minus the log of b, and I'm also going to use that property uh, that has that one half root, I'm going to bring that down in front. So let me show you what I mean. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate all of this out into the natural log of x plus the natural log of x squared plus 2 and then minus, I'm using minus because this is on the bottom, one half the natural log, and I'm out of room, of x cubed minus 7. Now that one half is in front yeah. That one half is in front because this was the square root and just like in our previous example I wrote it as x cubed minus 7 to the one half power and I went ahead and brought the one half down. So using that pre-cal rule I'm going to take the derivative one step at a time. I, I have a function separated by plus and minus signs so I'm just going to take the derivative of the first thing plus the derivative of the second thing minus the derivative of the third thing. So we're just going to do it one step at a time. So here we go. Natural log of x, the derivative of that is 1 over x. That's the very first thing I wrote down for the calculus -y part of this. Now the next one, I'm going to have to use the u stuff. This is the natural log of u. u prime would be 2x over u, x squared plus 2. And then finally, minus 1 half when you take the derivative of this last natural log, u prime would be 3x squared over u, x cubed minus 7. And so let's see here, do they have this, that going to be, it looks like it's going to be b. 1 over x, u prime over u, u prime over u. That's it. Alright, so that's all you need to know for tomorrow's lesson, and I will see you guys then.